And uh, third of all, it's rather hard work and tough science. So please, with a warm welcome, welcome with me, Holly Kirk. So I say it's one of the best British birds, that's because 90% of the world's population actually breed in UK waters, which makes this a pretty, spe pretty special animal. Um, these are pelagic seabirds, uh, that means they spend all their life in the sea. Uh, this is what happens when you attach a camera to the back of a shearwater. <laughs> so what you can see here is the bird is, is looking around, it's landed on the surface of the water, um, he's taken off. He obviously didn't find any fish. Um, they're called shearwaters because they basically shear the water. They fly very close. And this guy's just landed again. He's taking a look under the ocean just to see if there's any fish about. Um, and that's all of that lovely video. Unfortunately, now you're going to have to listen to me talk. Um, so I've been working on Mike shearwaters for the last four years. And as uh, Jochen already mentioned, I get to spend some of this time on what I think are particularly beautiful islands. This is Skomer Island. Um, this is one of the main colonies for, of Mount Shearwaters in the UK. As you can see, it's quite rugged. Um, it's also occasionally difficult to get to, and it doesn't have any hammocks, sadly. Uh, just some quite cold beds. Um, so how do we catch my shearwaters? <coughs> shearwaters nest in burrows, and this is the uh, correct position for getting a shearwater out of its burrow. Every year they return to the same burrow, and um, this is how we're able to capture them to do our research. Um, they also come on land during the night, which means a lot of our time is spent sitting in front of a computer, watching Green Wing or whatever else we found on Netflix and then occasionally going outside and getting very muddy and wet to catch these guys, which, I mean, I'm going to show you a lot of pictures of these, and I think they're beautiful, and I hope you agree with me. Cool, so once we've caught a Manx Shearwater, what do we actually do with it? So, um, one of the main parts of our work is GPS tracking. That means sticking a sat-nav on a bird. Um, we put it in a little backpack. Uh, I have one in my pocket. There you go. It's not very big. I hope you can all see that. If you can't, come up later and ask to have a look at it. Um, nicely, obviously. Um, what you can also see there is the um, camera that I've stuck on the back of this bird, which was the bird that caught all that glorious footage that you saw earlier. Um, so these, these little dudes are attached with tape to the back of the bird. The tape is designed so that after about 10 days, the glue starts to degrade and eventually the device will fall off. So the bird isn't stuck with this thing on its back forever. So why do we do this? So one of the biggest things we want to know in terms of studying animal behavior is how animals find food and what they do to find the food. And basically, yeah, so finding food is pretty important. It's pretty important for you guys as well, right? Shopping for food, that's surely something you must do at least once a week. Knowing me, it's probably more like every day, um, especially things like chocolate at the moment. Um, anyway. No athletic, no athletic. Um, so finding food is pretty important. And there are various kind of choices and decisions that birds have to make while they're finding food. And they're exactly the same as the decisions we make when we're going to the supermarket, i.e. where do we look? How long do we spend searching for food? How far do we travel? Do we go to the corner shop just down the road? Or do we go out of town to the big supermarket? What type of food to choose? I personally prefer an orange, but you know, that's not everybody. And also how much to carry. Now we all know the Germans, right, are the best people at carrying beer, but actually we're going to see if a couple of people in the audience can do a bit better this evening. So finding food or finding beer for the lowest price. Now we're going to do a little exercise, and if you don't mind, it's going to take me a little time to sort of 
set it up. But essentially what we're going to do, actually if you could help me, that would be great. Um, there's a big bag of beer. Cool. No, no, come back, come back. It's just, so if you could just like uh, scatter them around on the floor, um, put some in groups, not, not too far apart, not too far apart. Just, just over here, that's good, excellent, um, maybe some more. Sorry guys. The thing is, I wanted to set this up beforehand, but obviously you were all walking around here, and let's be honest, you would have picked the beer up and drank it. <laughs> cool, so there's some beers scattered around on the floor there, and there's also some beers here. Now, where are my volunteers? Come on, Adam. Come on, Dave. Come on, don't be shy. It's not going to be hard. No. <laughs> right, we're going to stand in this corner and we're going to pretend that this is your table or your house and you've just come back from work and you've had a really hard day. Now, get down on your knees. <laughs> Come on, on the knees. All right, now, David, you are going to go for the beers that are scattered close to you, because obviously he doesn't have as far to go. And Adam, you're going to go for the beers over there. Now, I want you to try and count the number of knee steps you take to get to the food, sorry, beer, and, um, I'm writing my thesis, beer is food. Um, anyway, uh, and yeah, we'll see how you guys do. And the idea is, um, how can I pick up as many beers in the least number of, well, steps, or the shortest amount of time? You guys clear on that? Oh, I forgot one last thing. You have to bring the beer back here. Okay, go. All right. <laughs> So we're doing quite well. Now obviously what we've got here is um, Adam's gone straight for that pile over there, which is pretty good. And they're doing quite well. This isn't supposed to happen. Um, Alright, Dave not doing so well. Come on, come on, come on. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, guys. Right, what have we got? Count them out. How many have we got there? I'm impressed. Cool, so... David who went for the piles nearest to us, scattered around, has got two, four, six, eight. And Adam, who went all the way over there to the big pile, has got two, four, six, eight, nine. Brilliant, my experiment has worked. <laughs> so, hang on, I'll get the clicky thing. This is what the animal behaviors, you can stay there if you want, but, or you can have a beer. <laughs> Just, or, or a few beers. Um, this is what we term an optimal foraging strategy, i.e. Um, how we would think about an animal um, going out into the wild, and basically animals will get the most food they possibly can um, with using the least amount of energy. So what you saw there was although Adam chose to go to the big pile of beer, which was much further away, he actually got more beer in the long run, kind of using the same amount of time and energy, whereas David chose to go to the um, smaller piles of beer, which were closer to him, um, but because they were scattered apart, he actually didn't get as many beers in the same time that um, was allowed. Anyway, oh, we've gone the wrong way. So, optimal foraging strategy, or get as many beers as possible, as cheaply as possible. Now, how does this relate to seabirds? So, what you can see here is a GPS track, um, from a from a shearwater on Skomer Island, that's where the S is. And this shearwater has chosen just to visit one supermarket down here. That's where you can see this great big cluster of points. However, this shearwater has visited two supermarkets. It's visited one just here, which is in a similar position to the last bird, and it's also visited one all the way over the other side of the Irish Sea, um, and that's uh, the south coast of Northern Ireland. Why, quite why that bird decided to do that trip as opposed to a much more local trip is really the nitty gritty that we're trying to understand. Why should we study seabirds? So there is a reason for me to go to beautiful places and you know, hang out with the birds. And that is because, so seabirds are top predators, which means they're indicator species. Um, they give us an idea of how healthy our ocean is. They also, um, 
are obviously very charismatic and we want to understand more about their behaviour so that we can actually help and aid in their conservation. So I'm sure you've all heard about offshore wind farms and where we should put them um, in, the, in the sea. Um, and these kind of maps showing us the main locations of foraging are actually really important for understanding which areas we might like to conserve for the birds. And also, this is the reason I study shell waters, because they have really cute chicks. That's it. Thanks very much. And then, um, yeah.